in the name of Jesus. Mokeboya da regedesh. Zeke tete kale de rogadosh. Kegote gote rogadosh. Ma baka se tete de adosh. In the name of Jesus. Egola dosh. Eke regedesh ilabodosh. Evaya tore bagosh. If you are joining us, just give thanks to God, appreciate Him. Magnify this great God. It's a season of blessings, a season of testimony. In the name of Jesus, you are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. Just appreciate this great God of our weekly revival. Weekly revival seasons in the name of Jesus. Today we are going to be talking about a topic that I love so much. Say thank you, Jesus. Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, I magnify you. I give you glory. I give you glory for keeping us on fire. I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you glory. What has the kingdom of God do, got to do with fire? Why is it important that the children of God have to be on fire? Why is it that you can get the best things from the kingdom of God? You can't get the best from the kingdom of God except you are on fire. Lea doke dira bashugu dagali kazada. Ebubu sakaria. Is somebody worshiping God? Say, Lord, I appreciate you. Thank you for bringing me to this meeting. Thank you for making it possible. Thank you for making it possible. Say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I appreciate you for keeping me on fire. You can type the, on the chat the title of today's uh, message, the broadcast. It go to go to. It's the doctrine of fire. The connection between peace and fire. The doctrine of fire. For those that want to live in peace, while you're on earth, you have to be on fire. It go le dosh. That's the connection. There is no peace, Aliyo to regret, except you are on fire. Eziato regret, regret, regret. It's your fire that will chase away the presence of the enemy from your household, from your finances, from your health. Therefore, you buy for peace. It's you being on fire that will chase away the community of which sounds are away from you and from your household. Therefore, you will have peace. When Jesus says, in me, you will have peace. But in the world, you have tribulation. How can you have peace in Jesus Christ? Only by being on fire. We will start with the scripture soon. Say, Lord Jesus, set me on fire. If you can type, type. Say the doctrine of fire. The baptism of fire. He to reggae the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost started, he has started preaching. The message has not started, he has started preaching. A good leg get there, get there. I get there, get there. John was talking about the ministry of Jesus Christ. What did he say? He said, Me, my brother, your brother John, I will baptize you with water. He go get leg with that. He go to go to he go to go to he go to go to the one that is coming after me. What will he do? He will baptize you with fire. A rago de get the he just get the good to go to Holy Ghost. What the class? A do gata gata gata. Where did Jesus? Jesus get that fire from that he baptized us with. Mm -mm. In the last of the in Acts 38, he lost a good day. He said, Our oh God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with fire. With Holy Ghost and with fire. So you see where all these fire things are coming from. It wasn't from Jesus alone. It wasn't from the Holy Spirit alone. It was from God Almighty. It was God Almighty that initiated the ministry of fire. Just simply said, people, come, I will baptize you in the wilderness. I will baptize you with water. But there is one that I cannot lace this, the sole of a shoe. I cannot lace it. Yeah, it's bigger than me. When he come, when he come, he will baptize you with fire. Someone said, Apostle Marvin, why are you talking about fire? Why are you interested in fire? Because that's the only way we can tap. He said the word of God was tried several times in the furnace. What is furnace? Fire. The word of God that you are reading in the Bible, the scriptures, that's why they cannot be broken. That's why they cannot fail. That's why the Bible cannot be pushed aside because it has been tried over, 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 over again. Several times the Bible said, 
Turn the furnace of fire burning. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Say, Father, I thank you. Say, Father, I thank you. If you are typing type, say the baptism of fire. We just ran through the processes of how we got into the season of fire, the baptism of fire, the doctrine of fire. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you thanks. Lay your hands upon your head. Say, Lord Jesus, in today's meeting, from the beginning to the end, set me on fire. Lord, set me on fire. Set me on fire. Let every lukewarmness, every anxiety, every fear, every timidity, every lukewarmness, let it be swallowed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the baptism of fire. Let it be swallowed. Everything not planted by God in my life, in my spiritual work with you, let it be swallowed by fire. I can no longer do things on my own accord. I cannot do things by myself anymore. I have handed over to the Holy Ghost. I have handed over to Jesus. He said, my plan towards you is of good and not of evil, to bring it to your expected end. I have some plans for you. I I have some thoughts to as you. I have a to as you. It's to bring you to the baptism of fire so that your doctrine, so that your words, so that your pronunciations can be on fire. In the name of Jesus, God will thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. Amen. For today, we are going to be very uh, brief. This is YouTube Live by the grace of God. And we are trying not to extend beyond no normal time where no, we are able to keep more people to watch our videos to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. So we're not we're running beyond 45 minutes or 50 minutes or, or thereabouts. So, you know, to grow the channel up to the glory of God. If you are here and you have not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. My name is Apostle Marvin Omede. A man sent by God to teach us to hear from God and to make the ministry of the Holy Spirit popular. We give God all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome once more. You are welcome. Just appreciate the Holy Spirit. So let's start from the scriptures this afternoon. We just prayed a prayer and we're talking about how the ministry of fire started. How it was connected to Jesus Christ. How it was connected to the Holy Ghost and ended with God the Father. What is it about fire in the body of Christ? So Jesus has started this whole thing when he was ministering in the book of Revelation, Revelation 3.15. Let's really check it. Even though God Almighty has mentioned few things before, but Jesus came to re-emphasize it. And Jesus, you know the way he teaches? He teaches so simple, using parable and simple things. He just broke it down to everyone's understanding. Our title for today in this season of revival is Doctrine of fire the connection between peace and fire i said in my prayer season i said if you really want peace here on earth you have to you, you hmm, hallelujah you say what what set two christians apart is the level of fire they carry thank you my brother god bless you pastor roland so is is what demarcates fire is what demarcates thank you because no wonder jesus was saying it in revelation 3 Verse 15. Look at what he said. He said, I know that was that that had neither cold nor hot. He was referring to a group of people, the Laodic the Laodicia, to talk to the church there. And hallelujah. He was talking to a church. That is why in this season of revival, most of the message that will come with, please don't, don't feel offended. The most time Jesus was ministering to believers than the minister to sinners. Why? It's when believers are revived. It's when believers are activated, when they are set on fire, that's how they can draw in more unbelievers. So Jesus was making sure his children, the sheep in the sheepfold, they are on fire. So he said, I would that I would that were cold. I would I rather that we were cold or hot. I would that we were cold or hot. So then, because that are lukewarm, some people are in the middle. Today they are here, tomorrow they are here, today they are here, tomorrow they are here. They are in the middle, they are playing, it's like a game. And, and thank you, Holy Spirit. Those that will say, Lord, I see, I serve you on Sunday. I serve you on, on Monday and Tuesday. So this Wednesday, Thursday, it's Wednesday weekend. I, and, I, and you know the way it is now, where I live. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure I can give you Friday, Saturday. You know Saturday is party time. And fr Friday is like weekend, I'm tired. So those Thursday, Friday, Saturday is for me. When you condition Jesus like that, you find yourself in the ministry of the lukewarm. That will not be your story in the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, so then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spit thee out of my mouth. 
then look at what it said in verse 18. Seventeen, because that says I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and know not that that had work wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Seventeen is talking about the reason why people take themselves away from fire. Hey, I think my bank account is now filled. I think I have a good job now. Why am I stressing myself? The last investment I made financially was a success. The other thing is good. I just bought a property. Those are things that bring people that kill their fire. What do I mean? When we begin to feel comfortable here on earth, when we are supposed to be sojourners, when we are supposed to be visitors, a land of intercessor, you are feeling uncomfortable, a land of watchmen. Why are you building your castle in this place on earth? I'm not saying you should not have good houses. I'm not saying you should not buy cars. I'm not saying you should not get married. But I'm saying be mindful of how you cast all your uh, treasures, how you build them here on earth. That's Colossians 3, 1 to 3. He said, if you not say you are a child of God, he said, put your affection, the things that bothers you, the things that you love, the things that you cherish, your treasure, put them in heaven where moths and other uh, uh, insects cannot eat it. So why are you not putting all your confidence on this earth that passes it away? In verse 18, he said, I can't say thee. I love this part. If you are going with an anchor scripture today, this verse 18 will be one of them. The Revelation 3, 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Jesus was saying, sometimes I sell things in the market. <laughs> Jesus was ministering. He said, my sons and daughter, sometimes I like him to go into business. When I go into business, I buy gold. I sell gold tried on the fire. <laughs> and that means be rich if you buy from me because my things are on fire you will be rich this your riches does not go anywhere this one like all your things are cold when the enemy comes one day that will not be your story then why pass everything is lukewarm because you want to be part of the friend I'll be sharing certain testimony with us that I heard recently this week our people will have dreams in their dreams the enemy will, will, will play with them like toys They'll take power from them. They'll take grace from them. They'll take virtues from them. In the dream. Why? Because believers are lukewarm. 24 hours of the day, you can't speak in tongues for 3 minutes. No time. Either you are doing this or doing that, doing that. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not remind you, say, my son, speak in tongues. Because you are never in the Spirit. But focus on the job. Focus on the job. Focus on the job. Focus. Everything. Work, 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 work. Where is the time for God? Where is the time for the Scripture? He said, I can't say thee, my sons, my daughter, that you buy of me, go try it in the fire, that that may be rich. You see, you see, you buy things that are on fire, that you'll be rich. The enemy cannot touch those things. The enemy cannot touch those things that are on fire. Hmm. And white raiment, and that may be clothed. You're going to wear those spotless white raiment. That's when you're actually clothed in the face of God, in the eyes of God. And that may be closed, and that the shame of the can do not appear, and anoint their eyes with eyes shape that that may see. Take cancer to the instruction of Jesus. It's as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. <laughs> I'm saying all these things in verse 18 that you be zealous and repent because I love you. I'm advising you, I chastise those that I love. He said, Believers should repent, you should come back. You should come back. So he said, Apostle Marvin, what are you talking about? I just mentioned that Jesus is a businessman. That whenever he says good, he sets things on fire. So if you are not on fire, you can't even buy his things. Let's go to Psalm 104. and see what the psalmist say. That one of my favorite scriptures. Psalm 100 verse 4. The psalmist was speaking. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, I've come to bring you a message of First of all, personal revival that will lead to generational revival, community revival. Because when you are set on fire, anything that comes close to you, we, 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 we get the fire. We catch the fire. Psalm 104, verse 4. It says, Who make it his angels, spirits, his ministers, you and I, his believers, his children, flames of fire, flamey fire. You know what flame fire is? It burns. It burns continuously. We are supposed to be burning there and that as watchmen in the body of Christ. As watchmen in the body of Christ. So this is an introduction today. I pray you catch the same grace that works and quicken me from the inside. 
Romans 8, 11 was talking about, he said, if the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from Christ dwell in you, it will quicken your mortal body. It cannot, you cannot be quickened and remain the way you are. The Holy Ghost is hot, it's burning continuously. 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 So that way you and I need to come back. You see, I love Jesus Christ. Whatever it feels, it says, Jesus Christ was talking about John the Baptist. One outstanding testimony that my daddy gave about John the Baptist was in John 5, 35. He said, John was a burning, here, look at the gather, and a shining light. I'll just tell you the truth. If there are personal things, I'm praying for myself. That Lord, I was singing a song three days ago on my way to work. I was praying. I said, Lord Jesus, when you come, may you make me worship him. Holy Ghost, I don't know when you are coming, but when you come, may you make me praying. I don't know when you are coming. When you come, may you make me blasting in tongues. Edura, Isada, at any time of the day, may you make me reading the Bible. That's it, matter. His heart is after God. May you make me do some of these things. Don't make me, don't, don't, don't make me in the wrong places. I don't want to miss heaven. Enough is enough. I was telling somebody this afternoon, are you not tired? Are you not weighing things? The, the, the world that we live in, are you not weighing things? After making all the money and buying all the cars, and what next? When God called me to ministry, say, Apostle, not Apostle, say, Marvin, my son, help me. Say, Marvin, people are going to hell. I've been calling people to ministry. They are not listening to me. For, for those of you that don't know what I'm teaching, what I'm teaching, that's what he told me. He said, he said go and teach them how to hear from God. My ministry is not to maybe uh, win souls like that in a sense. The core area of my ministry is to bring mature believers to Christ. That's what God told me that. He said, Marvin, I've been calling a lot of them. They don't know how to hear. Go and teach them how to hear so I can quickly draft them. Souls are going to hell. I want to rescue as many as I can, Marvin. Help me. Who am I? Who am I? I'm here. Trying to teach mature believers. Those are God that have been called. Thank God, my ministry, by the grace of God, I started recruiting believers that are due, that have been called, that are not aware that they have been called. That's what my ministry is aiming for. As I call you, as you hit my ministry, you are, you are back on feed, on fire. Prophets have gone. Evangelists have gone. So I give glory to God. He said, it makes you a flaming fire. That's God's desire for you and I. To keep you burning. To keep you burning. To keep you burning. That's why I humanly I, I, say that speaking in tongue is free. Thank God we are not paying for it. So my father said, ah, daddy, eh, I would have spoken in tongue yesterday. You know, it's $35 per hour. Or oh, 15 <laughs> yeah, they get it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's $20 per hour. It's $60 per hour. Uh -uh. It's free. Speaking in tongue is free. Anytime, blast. Nobody will hold you. You will not pay for it. It's, it, it's not asked. It's not that. It's task free. Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues is task free. Do it joyfully. And God now attached a scripture to it. Two scriptures that I like. One of them is Jude 120. He said, when you do that, you build up yourself in your most holy faith when you pray in the Holy Ghost. As simple as appeared as speaking in tongues, it quickens you, it purges you of dirty things. And look at another thing that it does. It clears your atmosphere. If there's a message God is to bring for you, maybe you have been too lukewarm this morning and you begin to speak in tongues for almost an hour, two hours running. Ah, you are clear the atmosphere and you are saying things in line with the will of God. People listen, no, why some people get this and so others don't get stuff in the body of Christ. When you are on fire and you speak in tongues every now and then, you will not let clear your heaven, create an open heaven for yourself. You are doing something else. You are extending the things that we, they were supposed to bring to you that would have lasted three weeks. You are drawing them closer into three days. Ah, Chugato, ah, Chugato. In 2014, as I was called to ministry by the help of the Holy Spirit, for the first three months of mother, I was reading three books in a month, praying as I can, worshiping. One day, the Holy Spirit came to meet me in December in Calabar. He said, Marvin, you are making me reveal things to you that you are not due for. I don't know if that will bless somebody this afternoon. Say, Lord, reveal things to me that are not due for. Lord, in Jeremiah 1, verse 11 to 12, he said, Jeremiah, if you see where, I will esteem, I will esteem, I will draw quickly to you as a blessing. The things that are proposed to be in the future, I will bring them to you if you remain in the spirit, Jeremiah. Because I was studying, I wanted to know. It, it was that year, three months after my call, that I knew that I would, I would be an apostle of the Most High God. What, what was I doing? I was reading a book by Kenneth E. again. He gave gift unto men. And I still saw the book some few, a few, few nights ago. He gave gift unto men. 
a great gift unto men, a cause of apostle, a cause of prophet. As I was reading about apostle, I was feeling something moving in my inside my body. Do, 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 do. When I read about prophet, do, 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 the same thing. I said, Lord, he, he said, Marvin, you are making me reveal things to you. Paraphrase now, by your level of study and commitment, that you are not due for. I was told, know that thing a year, six months time. What I knew December 2020, December 2014, it was to manifest 2016, May. May 15, 2016 was when I knew I was called, began to call the apostle. That's when the anointing came on me. God changed my name. But I knew way back 2014. I don't know what you are seeking for this afternoon. Stretch your foot your two arms. Say, Lord, by my level of commitment in this season of revival, under the anointing of Apostle, under Apostle Mami Omede, Father Lord, reveal to me that which I am due for. Even though it's far after this season, Father, reveal to me, draw back and release my blessing. Lord, we draw back and release my blessing. Send forth your angels to baptize me afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? I was just called to ministry October 26, 2014. Two months later, in December, I already knew what God was to show me in 2016. A whole year passed. My level of commitment and seeking Him. He said, These are the generation of them that seek God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of that is, including those things that are far, will be handed unto you. Matthew 63, Matthew 6 22. He said, If your eyes be single, your whole body shall be full of light. That light is fire. Fire. The entrance of the world of God give it light, light, light. Understand to the simple light and fire that could know Jesus Christ. I said, Jesus talked about John the Baptist in John 5.35 that he was a bony and a shining light. People, let us take the last scripture as we introduce the message and then I'll give us some few tips. We have 20 minutes or 25 minutes to go. God may be praised. Please, we may have to continue this next Friday. This is just an introduction to the doctrine of fire. As I close with the testimony that gave birth to this uh, topic. Leviticus 6, Ishoka Derugadash. Please don't stop speaking in tongues. And I gave three reasons. It opens great open heaven for you. It clears the atmosphere. It chases devil away. Like they say in the secular, that an apple a day chases uh, the sickness away. But when you speak in tongues a day, it chases the devil far, three weeks away from you. That will be your story in the name of Jesus Christ. Then it draws down the castle of God. It draws it closer to you. He had God to hasten his word. So Mass, uh, Leviticus 6, look at what the Bible says. A bad fire. 6 verse 12. It says, and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. Talking about the priest now. You and I. Who are the priests of the uh, New Testament? And the priests shall burn wood on it. What's the wood? Wood represent Jesus Christ, represent the word of God. And the priests shall burn wood on it on it every morning. You can have evening as much as you can read the word of God every day. You are burning wood on the altar. That's why you are fresh. And lay burnt offering in order upon it, and it shall burn there, there on the fat of the peace offering. This is where God's part of my connection between peace and fire. If you want to have peace on earth here, if you want to enjoy peace, you better be on fire. When the more your fire, your altar keep burning, you are entertaining and attracting the ministry of peace of Jesus Christ. He has said it in the world you face tribulation, but be of good share for I have overcome. It's Jesus that overcome, not you and I. He overcome for us. If you want to enter into that canopy, that umbrella, that atmosphere of overcomers, you have to engage in the ministry of fire. He gave us, he said, in him, in me, in me, you will have peace. But in the world, you have tribulations. To have peace is to be on Jesus. And you can't be in Jesus Christ without being on fire. He said, John was a shining and a burning light. And you were excited to enjoy in that glory. The fire shall never be born upon the altar. You and I, we are the body of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the body of Christ. When they say altar, we are the altar of Jesus Christ. That is why your body is not yours. It's the temple and the altar of God to manifest His glory. 
Whatever you do with this body, we are, we will account for it. You and I will account for it. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Any time your fire go out and my fire go out, we are attracting the enemy. Any time we allow our fire to go out. That will not be our story in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, my fire will not go out. My fire will not go out. I will buy of gold tried in the fire that Jesus is selling in Revelation 3.18. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He said, I will buy. I will buy of that gold. I will buy of that gold. I will buy of that gold. In Psalm 50, verse 5, as we take the message further, a bulaka dogo dogo do, a juka da gada. It says, separate me. Some of my sons and daughters, separate them for me. Daughters that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. I don't know in what capacity you want to operate in. You are the one that will decide. That is why when it comes to the ministry of fire and the doctrine of fire, you are the one that will decide. But thank God Jesus has been made an example for you and I. Say, Lord, I decide to be on fire. Lord, today I decide to be on fire. I thank God this message is sent on, on, on YouTube for most of you that are here already. Just start giving thanks to God. I appreciate this great God for who he is. You are the one that will decide the level of fire which you can become. In Psalm 50 verse 5, like we said, it said, Gather my saints. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made the corner with me by, fire, by sacrifice. You can also call that by fire. People that have succeeded to, in the past, in the Bible days, people that succeeded in the in, in, even in our generation, there are people that personally took decisions, say, Lord, I want to be on fire. I want to be on fire for you. Lord, set me ablaze so I can attract people to your kingdom. Jesus has given us an analogy. He said, I checked some of you in the body of Christ. I checked you. You are neither cold nor hot. You are neither cold nor hot. You are neither cold nor hot. May I rather that you are on fire so you can come into my presence. And we said in Psalm 104, verse 4, it says it makes his angel spirits, his ministers, flame of fire, a flaming fire. Why? Because the only way we can be likened compared to those angels of Christ is to be on fire. Angels are nature, uh, now, you heavenly beings, or we call them heavenly hosts. There are people that stay with Jesus and take instruction from God Almighty. They are always on fire. He said, He made angel spirits. His minister, flame of fire. If, we, as a minister of God, if you want to get close to that era, that atmosphere that the angels enjoy with Jesus and God Almighty, you have to be on fire. The, in, in our days, to be actively working for God is to actively keep ourselves consciously on fire. That's why I read the scripture. We are going to make a new sacrifice today. It's not about a, 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 a new offer, a new vow. Say, Lord, I vow to be on fire. What I'm sharing with you now happened to me in 2018. I was at home one day listening to a message of Bishop David Olegbo. My spiritual father, Bishop Willipo said something. He said, after a time in my work with God, people, are you listening? That's what we need to learn from Tom. These are our fathers. He said, after a time in my work with God, I reason to myself, what am I doing with my life? Have I taken a concrete decision and a, of, of a finalized decision to be an excellent servant of God? I said, what does that mean? That means I will not give in for nothing. That's what Paul also said. That neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demons, nor principality, nor power, nor money, nor fame, separate me from the love of God. I said, Bishop, what are you talking about? I thought you are serving God. I said, no, no, I'm talking about an excellent decision, an excellent lifestyle, a life without blemish for God. You are hearing me for it. He said, be you holy for I'm holy. You are heavy for that transparency with Christ Jesus. Excellency with Christ Jesus. That people will know both home and abroad. Don't go. Apostle Mami is this going to say this. Sister, this is going to say this. Brother, this is going to say this. Can't you see people, even though we are not laughing or mocking anyone, falling by the wayside? And they are Christians. Some of them are pastors. If you don't want to fall a victim, you better take a conscious decision, a vow. It's God, God, God said it, gather my sense. You and I, 
to get that unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice will be landing up on that atmosphere of personal commitment this afternoon. Next Friday, by the grace of God, God will take us higher. Those who have made a personal sacrifice will give a few examples in the Bible. Say, Lord Jesus, I have decided to work with you by excellence. A part of the scripture, he said, don't let your garments stain and don't let, allow your head black for you. Hmm. Another way to keep yourself on fire. Those that are on fire, their head never lack anointing or yet never. Go that physical spiritual. I remember it was a time in when when one of the time I visited the throne room with all humility in heaven. Oh, it's, it's the Holy Spirit that took me to the throne room in this instance. But in rare cases, I always meet Jesus Christ in the throne room because it's the one that will lead you to the Father. But to that day, that, as I was there, ah, I, could tell you this. I remember as the Holy Spirit dropped me, right? It was so big, huge. He said, Marvin, turn slowly. Holy Spirit was telling me, he said, turn slowly. Because behind me was so much bright light from the throne room. And he dropped me so close. So I said, so, and, and, and I was under to say, Daddy, why should I turn slowly? When I saw the level of light from the throne room, nobody would tell you. If, if even though in the realm of the spirit, if I turn sharply, I may get blind. Get blinded. So as I was turning slowly, I now heard him. Because I, I began to feel, you know, kind of anxious. And I heard them. I didn't know why I said she turns to me. And I touched the, the bone of his shoulder. It was, it's a big ego. That's how the Holy Spirit appeared to me. Big ego. So I touched it. This place was so soft. I can still remember. So soft, tender, hairy in his belly. But this shoulder bone was so strong. I, I heard it. No, no, child, I said, father and child. I heard that. Then I turned. When I turned, when I turned fully facing the throne, he left me. Then God the Father said, come. As I was going towards God the Father, I looked at my side and I saw Jesus walking the hallway. May Jesus walk towards you. In the name of Jesus. As I saw Jesus, oh, <laughs> I was so excited. I said, hey, nothing will happen to me. <laughs> because they don't, you don't go to the throne like that. You are someone most time. Something that ever takes you to the throne is something of key importance. A transforming season of your life. A new level of grace. That's what sent you. God, that's what the Father will call for you. As I was there, God the Father said, kneel down. I wanted to kneel down. I could not kneel down when I was not too close. His glory, boom, but I was face down flat. Then I felt hands. It was more than his hand. I, I sensed his hand as well. I think he beckoned to them to get in. Get, oh, no. That was another encounter. When he carried me on his shoulder, I said, they should give him, get him anointing oil. May God anoint you afresh in the name of Jesus. So in this encounter, I was lying down. Then he, I saw his hand. A with other a uh, more than uh, four or five angels, they had anointing oil and pour all the anointing oil on me. Oh, I was on the floor. Hey, they emptied the bottle, big bottles. So when I stood up, my body was dripping anointing oil, anointing oil. I looked, Jesus was standing on my right side. So I walked just, just to come. I walked towards Jesus. As I got there, he embraced me. All the oil that was in me entered into his body. He looked at me, smile. He said, You go. Is in you. Say they, they say they will not see it, but it's in you. It's, he allowed the oil to soak inside of me. Today, God will soak in himself in you afresh. And imagine being anointed in that place. That is why you see, I'm able to say certain things I say. It's not me. It's what God that have empowered me to. Last week, if you, if you, know, if you know, in our class, when we started this season of revival, we're talking about mantle. The mantle and the messenger. The mantle and messenger. I mean, maybe in, in future uh, season, as we continue in this series, we'll talk about the mantles and miracles. Everything comes from the showroom. And I forgot, Holy Spirit reminded me yesterday. They said, when you were teaching them the mantle and messenger, you didn't talk about that God Almighty has a mantle. Let me share with you. <laughs> There's one of my mentor here in America. Her name is Anna Rantry. I mentioned her in my uh, recent book. And Arantri was the one that proposed that. Why didn't we live in heaven and come visiting earth? Why, why do we have to live on earth? Because she has been to heaven so many times. It's so sweet. Why do we have to live on earth and be going to heaven? And why don't we just live in heaven and come to earth? If I don't like, I just go back quickly. <laughs> Where God is wise. And in the ministry of Arantri, God Almighty brought a mantle, his own mantle for Arantri. I taught us in the, if, if, if you have not listened to the, my message on mantle, please go and listen. God will give you something. He said, and I mentioned, I was very mantle. I said, mantle is given to you because of an extra anointing that you carry or an extra assignment for that we're in the class that you have to undergo or for a new message, impartation I receive. 
God Almighty brought his own mantle. Can I shock you about that? This mantle that this mantle is popo double side. Pakuta kata kata kata. Double side mantle. If you turn it, it's another mantle. Inside is another mantle. He gave it to Anna because he was sending Anna on a mission. Today, may God send you on a mission. Say, lift up your right hand. Say, Lord, send me. Lord, in whatever capacity, send me. That they are more valuable. Oh, I, I know I am so afraid to be a pastor. You are afraid to be called to ministry. But in that your little office, you want to, you want to send you to your, uh, your your co-worker. That's it. That, 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 that will be the whole of your ministry. So you send it to your neighbor that yet to give his life to Christ. So send you to that your friend who have been your friend for 20 years is still an unbeliever. To send you to that your neighbor, your cousin, your sibling, your younger sister, sometimes your child. So and you live an exemplary life for your child to see. Say, Lord, send me. Whoever you have assigned on my path, he said, Marvin, the harvest is right, right? But the laborers are few. Pray that God the Father will send for laborers to the harvest field. Lord, we are available. Send us. Send me to that, my friend. Send me to my co-worker. Send me to my community. Send me to my parents. He sent me to my father. Today, my father is, is, is a child of God. Lord, send me. I may not be a pastor. I may not be standing on the pulpit. But send me to whoever you want to send me to. I'm available. In the name of Jesus. It is well with us. Raya do sakata. So that was, I, that, I was in that room. Jesus said, Marvin, the all year is still in you. They may not be visible. That's why I came back to the earth. May God anoint you afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's run through three or four examples of people that were on fire and they caught that anointing by the grace of God. They were on fire and they enjoyed the benefit of being on fire. They were on fire and they enjoyed the grace of being on fire. One of them, who start with is the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood, she set herself on herself on fire by saying what you just said by her utterance. If only I could touch the, so that when I when I'm with people and I'm praying with them, they utter certain things. I stop them immediately. I stop them immediately because those simple words you are saying unknowingly can hamper or hinder your next level in life or your breakthrough. Our words are not common. Most of us don't know. When you are anointed, you don't say certain things. I thank God my wife is only sensitive. There are things I say, no, no, mommy, don't say that to me. Mommy, don't I say, I'm sorry. Did you hear now? She's very sensitive about that. And I too, when I'm with people, I begin to get sensitive. When you say something, I say, no, repeat, re reject that thing. Before we start praying, reject it. Let that thing not go and be an interest to our prayer. Because, thank you, Holy Spirit. As the angels of light take the word of God from your mouth and infect it, that's why the angels of darkness take God, do your negative word and go and infect it. I read the story about a man. If I share my one or two testimony, I will close this class. The man had minor injury in his leg in Lagos State, Nigeria. Any small thing, this leg will kill you. This leg will kill you. This what happened, people? That leg killed him. Minor crash. If you don't have any good thing to say in your mouth, keep shots. Because the ministry has changed. Power has been placed in the tongue. Authority has been placed in the tongue. Command has been placed in the tongue. He thou shalt decree at the team. And bind it on head shall be bound in heaven. You are the one that will bind first. Angels will not bind for you. Families will not bind for you. Children will not bind for you. Your spouse will not bind for you. You are the one to bind or lose. The church of God, God is suffering today in lamenting, in agony because nobody is ready to bind things. For those that may not know, I'm switching to warfare fully. My prayer is warfare fully. Fully because I was anointed for that and I was taught about warfare. So I'm switching and things are happening in my personal life and I'm grateful to God. But it has been broken. So switch to warfare if you can. Go for warfare prayers. Go for to ministry where they are ministry based on warfare. Go into warfare. Pray in the night. Pray, pray during the day and fasting as much as your strength can carry. Go into warfare. And to pray in tongues continuously every day is warfare. Because while you are praying in tongues, you don't know what you are saying. First Corinthians 14 verse 2 is so when you pray in tongues, you speak to God Almighty directly. That puts the enemy on, on the wrong. So be on fire. And how can you be on fire? By knowledge. I just share with us the story of the woman with the issue of blood. You all know the story, very popular story. But she proposed in her heart. She desired that, see, if I can see that Jesus, I will only touch him of his garment. If I can do that, I will get my healing. 
Those are people that are on fire. She didn't go there double guessing, trying to say, well, what, will I, what will I not do? She, from her, she decided, what did Jesus tell her? I said, your faith. Your faith has made you whole. Your fire I brought. You, I can't talk about that. He rubbed his fire with the fire of Jesus and it, it, she got her healing. The little fire she brought, no matter how weak your candle light is, if it touches an active candle is alive, your fire comes alive. Even if it's almost dying. That woman has spent all that she has. She was dying. Her wood was almost fading out with that fire. But as she touched the wood of the one that burns continuously, <laughs> oh, God, 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 God. Hey, Jesus burns 247. God is sleeping or awake. May you be like Jesus. Take this from me. Say, as my Apostle Marvin said, Jesus Christ born 247, 24 hours of the day. May you be like him. Any dead wood or dying fire that touches Jesus is activated immediately. No wonder John said, I'm going to baptize you, right, with water. But there's one that is coming after me. He baptized with Holy Ghost and with fire. <laughs> the, 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 the testimony of Jesus is that he baptizes with Holy Ghost and with fire. John is allowed to baptize with water. And I told you where Jesus got that from. It was in Acts 10, 38. Our God Almighty, the Father, anointed him with Holy Ghost and with fire. That's why he burns 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. This is five days in a year. Jesus is born. In. May you be born. In. May your fire never go out. May your fire never go out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Another person in that ministry is Daniel. Daniel was in a place where there is wealth. In the king's house, in the palace, said one day, just changed his mindset. <laughs> That's how Bishop Willie was changed his mindset. And I tapped into it in 2018. My life has never been the same again. Or you know, say, ah, ah, what kind of life am I living? I know I'm a child of God. I'm trying best. Can't I just go for excellence? You know, those days when we are in school, they'll say good, better, best, excellence. When they give you excellence, now you almost got 100 percent Excellence. Excellence, serving God in excellence, serving God without blemish, serving God without stain. Mm. So those that name themselves after God should depart from iniquity because God knows those that are his. Those people that are, that are gods, right? God put their name on the billboard and put it at the beginning of the streets. Any demon that is coming to your street and say, Go and look at her name, and she's on this street, she's gods, she goes on. Satan avoid those people. Those are the God has displayed in his big board. May your name be displayed on the big board. God knows them that are his. Those that depart from iniquity and have made a vow unto God not to go into sin. And to wash them garments in white snow. That will be your testimony. Let me take the third one. I share one or two testimony, uh, testimony this afternoon. Anna, the mother of Samuel, she made a vow. You see what I'm talking about? It has to do with money. It's a hard thing. The woman she, she sure brought was a hard thing. Daniel was a hard thing. Hannah, mother of Samuel, was asking, Lord, if you give me this child, I'll give the child back to you. Simple. That the prophets, the priests in the house of God say, why are you drunk this early morning? Say, Daddy, I'm not drunk. I'm just pouring my heart to God. I want God and I to come into an agreement that whatever I say, he will do it. I don't know what you want to say this afternoon before we start praying. He said, whatever I say, that God will do it. I'm pouring my heart to God. I don't want to go the same way I came. I don't, I mean, not understand everything. I don't want to go the same way. I just want to draw close. Quickly, how can a believer be on fire? One, by feeding steadily on the word of God. Leviticus 6, 12 to 13. A wood must always be on the fire. Before you are going to bed, place a wood on the fire. If you cannot read your Bible, put it in chunks. Something must be happening in you. Because Jesus born 247. How can a believer be on, on fire? By professing the things that God has desire to come to pass. I see, praying kingdom prayers. Most times, that's why I love Acts 6 verse 4. He said, we will continue to pray a ministry of the word of God. What does God want? We pray those prayers. That's why I do most of the nights. I say, Mommy, I don't want to pray my own personal. Let me start with God's prayer point. What is God's prayer point? That souls be saved. That the word of God increase. 
Acts 6 verse 7. Say the word of God increased in Jerusalem and disciples were added to the faith. Say, Lord, add more disciples to the body of Christ. Lord, call more people to ministry. Lord, set your fire, your, 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 your altar of fire for believers. Sanctify the church more. Let righteousness feed the health. Let more people give their life to Christ. Call forth laborers to their best feed. Help your pastors, Holy Ghost. Pastors that are weak, quicken their spirit with your power. Cause every devil on their behalf. Cover the family of every pastor with the blood of Jesus Christ. You are praying for the body of Christ. That will set yourself on fire. And third, by taking a conscious decision by yourself on what to do, on what to do, on self to take on a daily basis. I told you, and I said, I'm learning the ministry of warfare prayer and I'm focusing on the night season. A lady was telling me two, three months ago, it, it didn't, you know, it's as I pray, I've been praying, but now I'm, I'm bridging that focus, secondly in the middle of the night, which I know what that means. So if you can, take a, a, refresh your decision. If you want to increase your fasting during the day, you can do, a, do that. Depends on your program. That's why you can't work my program. Work on your own personal program. Don't go the way you have been going before you get the same results. This is 2024. We need more. The strength you used last year, you can't use it this year. Say, Lord Jesus, I vow, I have decided to separate myself more. In Proverbs 18, verse 1, he say, Proverbs 18, verse 1, he say, man, I won't separate himself, intermediate with all wisdom. What does that mean? If you separate yourself, whether in your house, in a hotel, in a retreat, you will intermediate with all wisdom. Why? God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, will come and teach you. Separate yourself. Consciously. If I'm not relaxing, the way I relax, I, I watch movie when I'm trying to relax, if I've done so much. But other times, I'm just with daddy. I just sit, sit in my little altar here. I'm separating myself. I lock my door. If I have to silence the phone, I silence the phone. Separate myself. Be singing slowly. He cannot de, she cannot mama to inama do go. He cannot de, sakati kare banu saga do go. He cannot de, de, sikili da go shabu kama go do. The song I'm singing now is not my song. When I was singing, the Holy Spirit said, Mommy, you are singing my song. I said, Daddy, I know. That song he taught me before I began to go to heaven. There are many of them. And I bless God, we are coming up with an album now of those songs. Why? Because I don't know how long I'm going to stay here on earth when I leave. I want people to know that God sings, that the Holy Spirit sings. That's my purpose of coming to that album. Two, that the Holy Spirit can inspire you to sing. People don't know that the Holy Spirit sings and can inspire you. Then three, that the Holy Spirit can know, people will know that some anointing before they come upon you, God will use songs to clear your atmosphere. That's not the first time that I, 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 I receive a song from God. I've shared before that this song is on YouTube. I never knew it was on YouTube. Yes, you are the Lord. Most I. Yes, you are the Lord. Most I, this may have happened to some of you. That song was singing in my heart for three days from morning to night. I didn't know the song. I was not, if I, if I, if I, if I was the one singing, I would know it. I wasn't singing, I wasn't the one singing. So, I mean, I didn't know it. I didn't know the song. I knew it was only three singing, but why was he singing? It was coming for a visitation. So the reason why I'm putting these songs in, in the album for, for a generation that will ask after me. Apostle Mary wanted people to know that for, for, for certain level of anointing that will come upon you, for a visitation from God, a song will come before to clear the atmosphere, to bring you the realm of the spirit. It was the third day. I said, Marvin, who is singing this song in my heart? I don't know the song. I said, let me check YouTube if the song exists. As I type, yes, you are dialogue on, on YouTube, I saw a song pop up. I said, what? This song is, is real. The following day, I had an encounter I will never forget. July 11, 2018, where God came from heaven. In Deuteronomy 436, he said, I speak from heaven. In Numbers 12, when he was coming to minister to Miriam and Heron, he spoke from heaven. Come here, Miriam and Heron, and stand before me in the tabernacle of the congregation. And he came in the pillar of cloud. In July 11, 2018, God came down. God told me he came down. When he was leaving, he took, he took my heart and I held it like this. Say, Mavi, I'm holding your heart. I began to cry like a child. I was inside the bus going to, going to work. I cried in Jamaica Avenue. I cried my heart out. He said, Mavi, go and do what you want to do. 
is approved. May God approve something in your life today. I don't know what you have been praying for. May God answer you in a way that you never forget. God will grant you an encounter of a lifetime. In that your ministry, you will blossom and bring forth fruit. In your marriage, you will blossom and bring forth fruit. In the life of your children, you will blossom. You will bring forth fruit. In the name of Jesus, in your finances, as a confirmation, you will be transformed beyond borders. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever your heart desire, her, her, you have been praying for a thing. I th this thing I'm talking about, it took me one year to pray for this thing. One year. One year prayer was answered July 11, 2018. He said, go, my son. Go. I've answered you. He I, 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 said, I didn't speak. I came so that someday you will not say you didn't hear me well. Because sometimes, that's why I told people, when God speaks to you, go and write it down. If you don't write it, you'll forget. You know why? If you don't write it and put a date, Satan will come one day and tell you that you didn't hear from God. That's why most people that are called to ministry today, they are confused. If you come across my path, I'll tell you, as soon as God tells you a thing, go and write it down and put a date. Write it in a way you can see it tomorrow in a note, in a notebook. Don't memorize God, what God told you. People are confused today. They didn't know if they were called to ministry because they didn't write it down. I have a bunch and bunch of books where, books where God has spoken to me. So, so Satan cannot confuse me. I'm on the next level in that. I date it, I time it, I do everything. So write it down. He said, my son, someday you will not say I didn't hear. You didn't hear where. I came. It came from heaven. When he was living, I, I could sense it. It was up there. I knew he was living, going back. So go to, I'm not talking about Jesus. So. I'm not talking about Holy Spirit. I'm talking about God Almighty. He left the throne to, have, to help me have, have that encounter. So when I see people are I'm looking at them, I think God give you a ministry that even you yourself will be amazed. I'm not surprised. He told me some of this thing before time. And we are just starting. Please, if you are here, you are a child of God. Go for fire. That's why I titled this season, this season of revival. Any of the message you will hear in this season until heaven comes, it, it, it will not be your, your regular message. I'm not here to make you excited. I'm not here to discourage you. But I'm here to set you on fire so that you will have come into a new love relationship with God. Have you, have you, come in, have you, have you met somebody you love? It, you can't sleep at night. Oh. <laughs> Let get the, get the. Ah! A, a, a true relationship, not where one is trying to take from the other. No, where there's a mutual love. You can't sleep at night. You send tests every now and then. You are dreaming, you are dreaming of him or her. That's how it was with Jesus. Baptism of fire. Nothing, not, nothing pleases you. We give him glory. And that encounter was confirmed with the scripture. See, Exodus 3 16, if I'm not mistaken. Quickly, let me tell you how we got to this fire thing. I was opposite about 2016. Bishop Wedek was there, I was still in Nigeria, said something, said we should come into a road, a season of, to get a road of the miraculous from God Almighty. So I went into a five days fast in that season so I can get a road of miraculous from God Almighty. So I was in church. I came late that day, I was in, at the back. And Jesus, Bishop, Bishop Wedek was ministering. And he said something in from uh, Luke 5, 17. He said, while Jesus was ministering, right, the power of God was available to heal them. And I asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, why is mine, my ministry not healing people? He said, Marvin, you don't understand what Jesus was doing. Jesus was exercising a certain secret in his ministry. I said, what do you mean? He said, before Jesus would go and preach the following day, I do that now, because I don't know it's a secret. He will pray at night. He will pray the Spirit of God into his word. How many of you are going out for an appointment tomorrow or, or for, for, for next week? And you, are, you, are not, you don't pray about those things. Pray about them. If you are traveling for any vacation, pray about the traveling. If you are trying to go and visit a friend or cousin, pray about that journey so that the castle of God will go before you. Jesus will go and pray. That's when Jesus prays in the spirit of God into his message. That is why while Jesus is teaching, that's how the ministry of Ketchikuma also operated. They don't lay hands on people much. I'm telling God to give me that grace. I don't have to go lay hands every time. As I'm preaching, you just catch your healing. That's what the word of God says. It says, send forth his word. His word hid them and divide them all their destruction. Psalm 1, verse 20. He sent his word. Your word will powerful enough to heal people when, when, when they are at home. And you are listening to me and you receive your healing from wherever you are. You are quickened by the word of God. He said, Jesus will go and pray at night and pray in the spirit of God into his message. That's how you can get healing. The Holy Spirit says something I will never forget. That will give birth to this topic. He said, the doctrine of Jesus is filled with the Spirit of God. In that Spirit of God, I change to fire. The doctrine of Jesus is a different doctrine. It's not the one that you and I minister or preach and nothing happens. That church is not like a clubhouse. That people come to church, they just do what they want to do. The same thing every Sunday and they go back home. No, 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 no new level of understanding. 
no depth, no fire. Things have to change. Things have to change. Go for revelations. Galatians 2 verse 2, Paul said, I went up by revelation. That when I came back, I have to go and secretly meet the top leaders in the body of Christ, the Peter, James, and John, and tell them what I encountered in the land of Arabia. You have to go to Arabia. You have to go. It may not be now, it may not be next week, but you have to go. Set time to go to Arabia. The way Paul went. He said, I went to my revelation. And encounters upon encounters. Until you have an encounter with God, you will not understand what I'm talking about. It is well with you this afternoon. You are blessed. May your heart be burning for God. He said, John the Baptist, as we close, was a burning and a shining light. In the name of Jesus. There's still more to share. I don't want to go beyond an hour in this message. So by next Friday, if you are here, please share this broker and bless people. Because we will not talk about the peaceful part of fire. We have not talked about our tree that next, uh, uh, next Friday by the grace of God. Share, invite others, and make yourself available same time next week. And if you are here and you are in Africa, any part of Africa, we have a class tomorrow. James Interpretation, Season 2, the advanced class. The time is Maybe the time, I'll, I'll work on the time. Normally it's 3 p.m. New York time. I'll be 8 p.m. in Nigeria. We may have it later tomorrow because of adjustment in my personal life. So it may be 10 p.m. tomorrow. I'll let us know when I change the time. But we'll have a broadcast tomorrow by the grace of God. No, I think we'll still have to 3 p.m. But I'll let us know. But for now, it's 3 p.m. New York time, 10 p.m. Nigeria, 10 p.m. UK, 3 p.m. Canada. Please don't miss that class. I'm still be teaching this weekend. I taught last weekend. Massive class. I'm, see, I'm trying to bring, there are so pressures. I want to bring those class to YouTube because in March, we had our basic dream interpretation. So go to my YouTube, go and scroll, six steps to interpret a dream and a prompting, a way to interpret dreams. They are there, two videos. So the two videos that started this advanced series, I want to bring them out of my Zoom class and put it on YouTube. So bless my kind. It's on fire. So tomorrow, I don't know what God is said to do. Please meet me tomorrow. Now we are interpreting in practical. I gave them assignments. So let's meet tomorrow and Sunday. I'll still be teaching. Then next Saturday is a class you never want to miss. A guest is coming to teach us from Nigeria, a dream interpreter. I want him to come with his own perspective. So we are blessed. All over the world from Africa is free. We can share. I think maybe next week I'll declare the whole class open. I'll declare the whole class. Whether in UK, Canada, Nigeria, America, nobody will be paying. So by the grace of God, I want you to prepare. Be prepared to learn. It is well with you. Ajiko Dogodo. See the two dreams I wanted to share. But God is speaking through dream massively. Every day, I'm dreaming every day. The minister of God, where I pray, was sharing this. He said he had a dream, like a vision, right? And he saw this person going with a motorbike, motorbike right? Motorcycle, motorbike. As he was driving the motorbike, you know, in a rickety kind of bike, where he got somewhere and he found that he saw a car. And the car that he saw ah, was a bus van. And he said, this is my car. He dropped that bike to go and pick the car. As he got there, he said, a superman, a super being, I believe a demonic being came and said, what are you doing? Can't take your ass off there. Take your ass off that thing. Go and take your rickety, useless bicycle and get out of here. That's how the person could not claim what belongs to him. And you know the real life starts in the realm of the spirit. If he could not claim that thing in the realm of the spirit, he can't have it in the physical. But you know what happened there? God has promoted that man, that woman, to the next level. I wish he could have gotten that thing in the realm of the spirit. Many believers today, they are being subcharged. They are, things are collecting, they are, people are robbing them of their blessings from the realm of dreams. Because why of spiritual weakness? May, may you not be lukewarm. May you not, please, if you know anybody that want to benefit from this message, share to them. Share to them. It's free so that they can come on fire. God, God has blessed you, but you can't collect the blessing. Hmm. God has blessed you, but you can't tap into it. Why? Because you have to be on fire to tap into fire. Can, you, can somebody type that? You have to be on fire to tap into fire. Why was Jesus to treat this next week? Why was Jesus able to save Jedi, Meshach, and Abednego? Because he is on fire 247. You have to be on fire to buy into fire. You have to be on fire to tap into fire. If that person was on fire, he would have screamed at that demon, get out of this place, in the name of Jesus, and get his car and leave. And then things will happen in the physical, manifesting God's glory. But today we continue to struggle. May God give us understanding in the name of Jesus. May you be on fire for God today. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, set me on fire. 
Everything that belongs to me in the name of the spirit that you have received, I claim them by fire. I claim them by fire. I claim them by fire. My husband, I claim by fire. Some of you are due to be married. Male or female, you are due to be married, but you can't claim it. What belongs to you? Oh, your finances is struggling. You can't claim it. The job that I'm doing now that is helping me, God gave me, I was seated in an encounter. He, he mentioned it. Go and do this job. God can speak to your finance, speak to your next level. He will direct you. Five, four, five years ago, I I, 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 I I left my company and I was to get on that one. It was hard for me. Dr. Mavi, I've given you a space there. He can speak to whatever you want to do. Is it business? Can speak to your business. Just be on fire. To hear him speak. When you are on fire, you will hear him speak to you. But if you are not on fire, you can't hear God. Even marital issue, family issue, children issue, any kind of thing God speaks is interested in our minutest details of our life. He cares. He can't come into sin. He can't come to where you are because of how we live. I'm not saying we are sinners. Please pardon me. I'm not saying we are sinners. We are believers. Children of God. But what I'm saying, until we get to the next level, we can't tap into certain things that belong to the next level of our life. If you have to grow, what did they tell John? Say, John, come up with that. I know you have been on online or past month for three months now, but that will not guarantee you to see in heaven, to come to the true room. Boy, step up. John, John, go and decide in your heart for only want to serve me. Step up, John. I come up and let me show you things that will be for be, be after now. I've been praying for my eyes to be open for the past 10 to 12 years from Nigeria. When I got to America 2019, Holy Spirit said, Marvin, that you have prayed. He said, Marvin, do this for me. Die more. If you want me to take you to the next level of your anointing, for you to see and come to heaven, die more. So that what does it mean to die more? When you say die more, I want you to make it your, it yourself a sacrifice. Don't put conditions ahead of me. If I, if I don't, Lord, if you don't buy this car for me, I, I will not serve you. Lord, if I don't relocate to California to go and get a duplex, I will not serve you. Lord, if you don't do this, Lord, if you don't do this, mm -mm. He said, if you want to serve me, serve me with no condition. God will bring you to that realm in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. Lord, I will surrender to you. I will serve you with no condition, with no barrier. I will serve you with no limitation. Lord, I surrender unconditionally. I surrender myself as a sacrifice. That's what the Bible said in Romans 12, verse 1. It says, Ah, katoko tokoto, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present yourself a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Say, Lord Jesus, as we close now, I present myself a living sacrifice to serve you without blemish, without shame, without error, without murmur, without complaint. Lord, have mercy on me. I surrender myself, a living sacrifice, a say, which is a reasonable service, which also, you were supposed to do that anyway, Lord have mercy, I present myself, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, a bobo shagada, a guata garagada, a sikodogodo, he says, separate them for me, my children in UK, my children in America, those in Australia and Canada, my children in Nigeria, separate them for me, that have entered into covenant, come out with me, by sacrifice, Paul said, a godogodo, I beseech you, for brethren, my beloved, that you present yourself a living sacrifice unto God. It is well with you. As you go today, you are blessed. You are sanctified. You will not die in shame. You will not die in shame. You will not see error. You will not see barrier. Your life is quick and fresh. God will visit you in a new way. In the name of Jesus Christ, between now and next weekend, we will meet again. You will be on fire. You will come back to this altar with testimonies, with encounters. In the name of Jesus. Your garment shall be white and your head shall be filled with oil. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please don't forget to share. And if you are here for the first time, my name is Apostle Marvin Omede, a man sent by God to teach how to hear from God and to make the ministry of this week popular. Your presence has added visitation to heaven and he has anointing, and he also had a dream interpretation. These are fresh anointing that have come upon me, and I'm here to share with the world. It is well with you. Please share, like, and then subscribe. If you have not subscribed, we'll meet again next week, same time in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, please promote these uh, teachings. From I will finish our gym classes. We'll take this to Saturdays, where the world can hear the voice of God. Congratulations. It is well with you. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet flesh of the Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, goodness, and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, shall dwell in his presence forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please share and bless people with it. It is well with you. If you have questions, send leave your question in the comment section or send to me directly. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.